Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you everything about deep linking in Jetpack Compose that you need to know. First of all, what is a deep link? A deep link in the end is a link that takes you to a specific destination of your app. So you can think about that for example as if you would have the Instagram app. And in the Instagram app you have a bunch of posts and if you then go to your browser and you click on a link that would open a specific Instagram post, then with a deep link the app will open that post instead of the browser will open that post um, in the yeah just as website so that will be one example but another example would be that your app shows a specific notification and if you click on that notification it doesn't just launch your activity instead it actually takes you to a specific destination to a specific screen of your app passing some data if you want to and as you can see here, uh, what we will build is a very simple two-screen app. We're going to have a starting screen, which just takes us to the details screen. If we click that, then we can see, okay, the ID is minus one. So this is just some kind of data that we want to attach here. Clicking on this button won't attach any ID at all. So we just set it to the default, which is minus one. But the interesting part is now, if we close our app, go to my website, here I now added a button to actually open our app. So if we click in our browser on this open app button, you will see that our app will open with some data that we attach, which is the ID 999. So that in the end is a deep link. And I will show you how you can implement that, how you can implement it with your own website, how you can also start this from another app. So I also prepared a little other app here, which simply triggers our deep link. So we can click that. And as you can see, it takes us to our other app again, and this time passing a different ID here. So yeah, you will learn both these, how you can yeah, launch this from another app. Also, yeah, that would be the same approach, how you'd also launch your own activity and deep link using you know, a notification, for example, or uh, yeah, just launching that from your web browser. So I am here in an empty Jetpack Compose project. All you really need here to follow is this dependency here, navigation compose, that is of course needed to implement navigation and deep linking therefore. If you have that, we can go to main activity and we can create our simple nav host here, which is used to define different screens where we want to navigate between. We need a nav controller for that, which you can simply get with remember nav controller. We don't need to pass anything here. We pass our nav controller. We don't want to pass a graph, instead we want to pass a start destination, which I will simply set to home here. And then here in this block of code, we can add two composable blocks, which each stands for like uh, one specific screen. On the one hand, as I said, we have the home screen, which is just very simple. Let's add a box and a button here. So the modifier could be modifier fill max size, and we want to align the content in the center of the box. And in here, inside of the box, we add this button I talked about, when we click this button, we simply want to navigate to our second screen. So we can say nav controller navigate. The route of that second screen will simply be called detail. And the text of that button will be, yeah, to detail. So then below this home composable, we want to add our detail screen, which will also accept these deep links. So we add a composable. The route will be detail. And normally, if we were to pass some um, navigation arguments here, we would do this here in this route using something like, um, yeah, like ID in curly brackets. You can do that if you also want to be able to pass this ID while navigating here to this screen. So if you want to pass it directly here, but we only care about this ID in this case, if we open this screen from a deep link. So what we instead want to do is we want to add deep links. So we simply add a list of nav deep links here. We can get, uh, yeah, we get this block of code here to configure that. And in here we have a bunch of options as you can see. So we have a URI pattern, an action and a MIME type. We only care about URI pattern and the action. With this URI pattern we can specify well, the pattern for the URL where this deep link should trigger for. So in my case that would be HTTPS plcoding.com because that is my website and I want to make sure that when this URI is triggered by a deep link that our app is one of the apps that can that can handle this deep link and open the app with a corresponding ID that we pass and here we can now pass this ID. So if we open https pillcoding.com slash 
3, for example, then the deep link will detect that it satisfies that link and it will open our app with the corresponding ID that we passed in this URL. We then also want to pass an action, which is simply intent action view, because the thing we want to do with that deep link is just to view some content. For example, if we take the yeah, like the Instagram example again, then if you open such a URL, for example, instagram.com slash post slash any ID, then you want to view that post. So that is the actual action we want to perform here. We then also need to pass some arguments. So we specify an arguments block where we pass a list of nav arguments. And here we only have our single argument, which is ID, of course, and we can configure that so we can set the type of that argument, which is simply nav type dot int type, and we can set the default value to minus one. So if we don't attach any value for that, it'll simply be minus one, which will, for example, be the case when we navigate here, since we don't attach any ID to the screen. Cool. That's it for the configuration of that composable. We now, of course, need to also build it, which is very simple. We simply add a box again, and here we just want to center text that says, um, hey, that's your ID that you passed to this screen. So we can say content alignment is center. We get our backstack entry here, which contains the argument. So we can say val ID is equal to entry arguments get integer because we get an integer, of course. And the key of that is ID. Inside of our box, we will say we have a text and the text will simply be the ID is and we pass our ID. And that's already it for our screens. Of course, right now, that won't be enough uh, to make our deep link work. So we need to distinguish between explicit and implicit deep links here. It's similar to intents in the end. So an explicit deep link would be that we specify an exact application that will satisfy this deep link. So if we are inside of our app and we, for example, want to launch our deep link inside our app, then that would be an explicit deep link and that would work without issues. However, very often, as in our case, we want an external application to launch our deep link. In this case, the browser, for example, or any other app, which I will also show you here. And then just doing it like this won't work. Because in that case, we also need what is called an intent filter. We specify these intent filters in our manifest. And an intent filter, as you can see here, is in the end just something that specifies, hey, our application can be launched by another application in these specific scenarios. So for example, we can say intent filter, declare this here. And in here, we can declare three different types of properties. On the one hand, we have the data property, which is needed. Here we can specify the host. So that again, is just our URL. We say HTTPS, actually not HTTPS. We don't need that here. Just plcoding.com in this case. And we then also specify the scheme, which now would be HTTPS like this. So that's just the same as we did here in our composable, just that this is yeah, compose only that compose knows which screen should open for this URL. And this here is meant for other applications so that we really declare our app to be openable from other apps. We then also need categories. With these categories, we can uh, yeah define some extra options. So we need to only pass a name here. And on the one hand, we care about this default category, which yeah kind of marks this um, our activity here to be launchable by default. So that means even if the other app does not explicitly specify that our activity should be launched um, and just does not specify any activity at all, then with this category, we make sure that our app can still be launched. And we also want to specify another, another category, which is browsable, which just means, hey, this deep link can be opened from a browser. And we also want an action that we attach. The name of that will be action view just as we specified in our composable as well. And now we successfully specified a deep link or rather an intent filter uh, that matches our deep link. We could also copy this and sometimes you want this. You can paste this again and also make this work for just HTTP. So in my case, only HTTPS will be relevant, but depending on your use case, you might want to have both these variants. And if we now launch this app on our device and take a look here, and then right now we could of course navigate here and we get minus one as the ID that is not surprising. But Android Studio actually has a built in tool that allows us to easily test deep links. And we can reach this tool going to tools, app links assistant. Then this window will open up and down here at point four, we can test our app links. 
So that will simply fire this intent that will launch our app with the given URL. So here, for example, we could say one, two, three, we can say run test. And you can see that my app actually launches with that corresponding deep link. So we get the ID here inside of the app. However, depending on the Android version, this might not work this easily. As you can see here on point three, we can associate a website. And I think starting from Android 12, we actually need to do that. So if you want to be able to open your app from a website, then you need to own that website. So that is a change Google made. And to be able to, to tell Google, hey, that's my website, and I want to be able to launch my app from that website, we can open this digital uh, asset links file generator. And in here, we first of all need to specify the site domain, which is simply my website. Um, you won't be able to follow this with my website, obviously, because you don't own it. Um, but in case you have your own website, I will show you how you could um, yeah, kind of tell Android, hey, you own that website. You specify that, you specify your application ID, which is already entered by default. You don't need to tick the support sharing credentials between app and website that is used if you have some kind of login and you then, um, yeah, into your website, the user clicks on a link in your website and is logged in on that website, then those credentials will also, will also be shared with your app so that the user won't be able won't need to actually enter these credentials in the app. But we don't have any login here. Then you need to pass a signing config. Since we use the debug build here, we just use the debug config. But if you then publish your app, you actually need to set that up with a specific key store file, obviously, which you use to sign your app. You can then click generate a digital asset links file. And this is the piece of code you now need to copy. Then you go to your website and you need to uh, log in to that with SSH. SSH is basically just a tool to um, yeah, remotely control a server. If you have a website, you will probably have such um, SSH access. In my case, yeah, that's just the URL I need to access that will differ for your server. You then press enter here in your terminal, you log in with your password, and then we are in here. I can clear this. I want to navigate into my specific domain and in here yeah we just have all these files that i have on my domain and what we now need to do is if we take a look here to complete associating your app with the website save the above file to this specific link so we need to go into dot well known and then create a file asset links json in our website root directory or rather in our website's well known directory so we need to take this code here and copy it Go to a terminal, cd into dot well known. And in here, we need to create a file called asset links. So we can do this with a nano, that's just a text editor for the terminal. So asset links.json. I already have this file. Um, so I will, yeah, I will delete this very quickly. Um, um, asset links.json. So we can create this from scratch like this. And then we can simply um, paste our code that we got from Android Studio right here. We can save this hitting uh, control S and then control X to get out of this. And now we actually made sure that this file is accessible at this specific domain. If we then click link and verify, you can see we get both these check marks. Um, actually, the first one is a bit weird because we haven't added this auto verify yet. <laughs> it seems like it still checks that I will show you what that means. But the second one is the important one, which yeah, it just means that it can find that entry on our website. What this auto verify is about is here in our intent filter. Oh, and actually, it did automatically add that but I did not add this seems like yeah, Android Studio added that. So auto verify just means that it will autom automatically verify with our website that we actually own this and you need to add that if you actually yeah want your app to be usable on at least android 12 plus which i guess you want so let's now launch this app again on our device and i also just deleted the other app i have so we now only have this single app that will satisfy our deep link if we go to our browser and we click open app, then we can see that our app will actually open with the corresponding ID. And in our browser, yeah, that's in the end just a link. You can see it will open app plcoding.com slash 999. And that will work just fine. However, what happens if we now want to also launch this deep link from another app? So not from our browser, but from another app that we might own. 
then I will also show you how to do that. And for that, I prepared another project here, which is just, yeah, again, an empty Jetpack Compose project. Here, you don't need any dependencies. And in here, we will just set up a very basic box again with a button. So we fill the whole size and we make the content aligned to center. And in, in here, we just say, we have a button. When we click this button, we want to launch our other app with a corresponding ID. And the text will be trigger deep link. In here, the way we will do this is we need a so-called pending intent. With these pending intents, yeah, these are also what you actually need to attach to a notification, for example, and if you construct that. So if the user taps the notification, the pending intent will fire. And in this case, it would simply launch our specified screen with a specified ID. For a pending intent, we first of all need to create a normal intent. So we can just do that here. We need to specify an action here, which is intent action view. And we need to pass the application context to construct that intent. Or actually not the application context. We don't need this here since it's an implicit intent. We just need to attach the URI that we actually want to open. So our URL. So we can say URI.parse. Whoops, not that one. Uh, URI.parse. We say HTTPS. PLcoding.com. And we open any ID here. After that, we can construct our pending intent by simply saying task stack builder dot create. Here we need to pass our application context and we state that run. So with this task stack builder, we can create our own type of pending intent that will open our other app. We first of all want to add this next intent here. So we want to kind of link this intent to our pending intent with this at next intent with parent stack. So we pass this and then we can say get pending intent to actually construct that pending intent. We need to specify a request code. So in case we get some result of that, which we don't get here and we need to pass some flags. We want to pass pending intent flag update current. So if there is already a pending intent, then this one will update the existing one or so we want to link these flags. We want to say pending intent flag immutable that is just required on Android 12 and onwards, I think, or 11, not sure anymore. You can see we get a warning. Um, okay, it's actually it's required from Android 11, I think, but it exists starting from API level 23. So we can simply say alt enter surround this with this per with this version check. And simply if we are below this version, we can paste this here again, just without this flag. Cool. So now we have our pending intent and all we now need to do is we need to say pending intent, but sent to send that intent. And if we now launch this app, taking a look here in our emulator or my device rather, then we get our screen with trigger deep link. And if we now click this, then our other app will open with the corresponding ID. And those, yeah, that is basically everything you need to know about deep links in Android. Of course, for XML, it's a little bit different. If you have an XML project, you actually um, retrieve your deep link in the on new intent function of an activity. So here you, here you would then get this intent that was passed. So in this case, this one here, and then you manually need to parse this ID from that from that um, yeah, intent that was sent. But it, in the end, it's very similar. You also need to specify stuff in the manifest. And then, yeah, you can launch your, your app from other apps. You can launch it from the browser. And I hope that now helped you. If it did, then you will definitely also love my more advanced Android courses, which you can find down below on my website, where I, where I can just go much more into detail, build larger projects than I can uh, do here on YouTube. And apart from that, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet and you don't want to miss two regular Android videos every single week, then uh, now is a very good option to do that. So hit subscribe, don't miss any more videos. And apart from that, I will wish you an excellent rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye bye.